Do any of you know about football? Football? Soccer? I think you do. I think you do. So the biggest compliment that I can pay to you is that I'm a Liverpool fan. But the sound of Peace Choir, and I hope someone will translate this in time, the sound of Peace Choir and this amazing quartet for which we thank you, you are much, much better than Liverpool fans in singing. <laughs> And that makes you the top of the world. So thank you very much. Thank you. Sounds of peace. So I would like to reinvite Cecile Rielon of the IOM back to take your panel. Thank you. So here we are. So welcome to, uh, to this panel uh, where we're going to be really zooming into a very important issue, which is basically how do we use the 2030 agenda to frame the way we design and implement local solutions uh, to displacement and migration. So what I'm going to do now is to call the panel members and then I will give a few words of introduction just to launch uh, the conversation. So first of all, I'd like to, to um, call to the podium Mohamed Saadie, who's the president of uh, UCLG, uh, MEWA, so for, that is the regional branch of UCLG that is covering this region. And he's uh, president of the Union of Danian Municipalities in Lebanon. Um, and it's basically, these are municipalities that are uh, hosting large amounts of Syrian refugees. So very warm welcome to you. Okay. Then I'm, I'm calling to the, pan, to the uh, podium Dinsha Orkan, uh, who's the mayor of Kaizi municipality, a Turkish municipality that is located on the Asian coast. Welcome, sir. Um, I'm also calling now Mr. Abdurrahman Dursun, who's the mayor of uh, Sultan Gazi municipality in Istanbul district. Welcome. Now calling uh, Ms. Uh, Susanna Garrido um, Gandulio, who's uh, the mayor of uh, Villa Marin Marinque de la Condesa in Spain, um, as well fancy representative, and also working for the uh, Andalusian Fund of Municipalities uh, for International Solidarity. And um, I think you will certainly make a very interesting contribution as uh, looking at how municipalities can be working uh, across borders with one another is a very important dimension of what we have to be looking at. And last but not least, I'd like to call uh, Mr. Mohamed Basrawi, a esteemed colleague from UCLG, uh, who is a director of program. So let me first give a few words of introduction for, uh, to launch the conversation in the, in the context of this panel. Um, first of all, let's recall that Agenda 2030 and its uh, Sustainable Development Goals really offer a formidable opportunity to connect migration and displacement with longer-term development considerations. The 2030 Agenda really stands as a long-awaited platform to um, really connect the multi-dimensional reality of migration with policy making. Target 10.7, calling for orderly, safe, regular, and responsible migration, represent obviously the most direct reference to migration, yet the 2030 Agenda is also wrought with explicit with goals and targets to, for which success is contingent upon the due consideration of migrants and refugees. For example, we will not uh, be able to close the gender gap as envisioned in SDG 5 if we do not adequately address the intersecting forms of discrimination that migrant women face, as well as refugee women, face in their origin, transit, and host communities. 
We must also draw on the broader promise to leave no one behind and, and really connect migration and displacement with wider issues such as reducing inequalities as captured in SDG 10, but also with critical issues such as access to health, access to education, employment, security. So cities and other levels of decentralized governance are really at the forefront of addressing the challenges and opportunities brought by migration and displacement, and really to, collect, to connect local solutions with broader uh, issues, such as the critical aspect of social cohesion. So the Agenda 2030 really represents a powerful canvas to anchor responses to migration and, and displacement with local development planning, urban planning, to bring also local sectoral policies such as access to education, housing, employment into coherent solutions anchored in whole of society and whole of governance principles. So in other words, really the 2030 agenda is a powerful tool to harness the development potential of migration and displacement for the benefits of the refugees, of the migrants, of whole societies, as well as sending societies. So now, you know, it's now time to hear uh, from our distinguished panel members. Um, they have been asked to answer three questions. First question is how uh, local partners can ensure the realization of the SDGs and localize objectives around issues such as local service delivery. We've also asked our panel members to reflect on how to ensure that local governance is inclusive of all layers of society. And third, what are the bottlenecks that are, could prevent further contribution of development approaches to refugees and migrants at local level? So this is, these are the three questions that will be structuring the responses from our panel members. I understand you have six minutes um, for, for, to, to provide your, your, your statements. And what we would really want to do at a later point in time, if we have time, is indeed to also give space for you to ask questions to one another, because it might be that you're curious as well of what your fellow panel members will be sharing, and of course to take uh, questions and answers. So I'm just going to uh, make a slight change of plan by giving uh, the, the, the floor first to uh, Mohamed Basrawi, who I understand uh, was supposed to be in the panel in the morning, so uh, your, your contribution will be more um, a contribution on behalf of UCLG. Over to you, Mohamed. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Cécile. I think there is a small mistake on my name. My, my correct name is Mohamed Bousraoui, you know it. Um, let me uh, start by convening the um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Emilia Said, Secretary General of UCLG, apologize for not being uh, here with, uh, with us today uh, due to unforeseen commitment in, in, in Barcelona. I would like to thank the, uh, the organizer, UNDP, UNHCR, IUM, and the municipality of Gaziantep for inviting us to this uh, municipal forum, which is uh, highly relevant for UCLG in many respects. First of all, this gathering is framed in the commitment by local authorities toward the accomplishment of the Global Compact last year in Marrakesh. Secondly, ahead of the Global Refugee Forum to take place in Geneva in December, it is a first step to demonstrate that local authorities are not mere implementing partners, but central actors to secure the protection of the right and dignity of all. The evolution of our cities is inextricably linked to the movement of people that enrich our communities and our culture through their experiences, their exchanges, and their ambitions. Local and regional government have a critical role to play in the construction of inclusive and pluralistic societies, not only through catalyzing dialogue, but also through guaranteeing access to basic services and fostering policies that will make newcomers Welcome. The deployment of the right to the city for all plays a critical role in leaving no one behind, no place, no place behind, and in this soul, antidote the, to the rise in discriminatory and xenophobic discourse. This head trade narrative about displacement as challenge have seriously damaged the cohesion of societies around the world. Indeed, discriminatory barriers 
will never stop migratory flows from occurring, but can be the cause of exclusion that will push newcomers into challenging situations and can feed great disconnected between these new communities and the existing population. For this reason, United Cities and local government have been committed for many years, not now, not only in strengthening local capacity and decentralized cooperation to deal with the governance of displacement at urban level. <clears throat> Our duty is also to shift the narrative about human mobility and help local authorities and communities to grasp the benefits of human exchanges. Local and regional governments are key to change perception, policies, and environment. In our streets, migrants are neighbors who live in our city and that work with us. And local authorities will need to aim at providing the same type of service provision for all. The role of local authorities, fabric, and administration is to support newcomers and enable them to contribute to local economy to showcase how migrants can contribute to local economy development. We are not naive about this. We know that making this vision a real reality is a challenge. We will need to change the capacities and work hard to talk with each other and make these barriers fall. Local and regional governments are already contributing to the implementation of some of the objectives that appear in both global compacts, which means that we cannot be an afterthought in matters that are so close to our governance, and we must ensure that cities are represented in both the implementation and the follow-up of the global compact. This is why in December 2018, over 60 cities endorsed the Marrakesh Mayor's declaration to jointly advance the principles and objective of the Global Compact for Migration and Global Compact on Refugees. In the same year, local government managed to consolidate their space at the Global Forum for Migration and Development through the establishment of the Mayor's Mechanism composed of UCLG, IUM, and Migration Council, Migration Mayor's Council. The launch of the call the launch of the call to local action on migration and displacement in Durban during our World Congress by the mayor's mechanism within the GFMD pro process will give us the opportunity to demonstrate in global fora the essential role of cities in accomplishing our goals. I very much hope that this forum will help us do a step forward in gathering local pledges to ensure that the voice of cities is listened is listened at a global level. Indeed, local and regional authorities have a crucial responsibility in supporting migrant inclusion and removing the barriers to their contribution to the local fabric and so, do, and so do states in supporting local authorities to achieve such goals. Access to basic services is integral, as is a strong coordination among all spheres of government in particular among national and local spheres and the stakeholders at the local, national, and international level. As World, of, as world Organization of United States and, the government, uh, and Government, we have considered migration of one the key issue in our actions during the past years. With our wave of action on migration, our project on migration in the Mediterranean that has involved up to 20 cities, and has culminated with inputs toward the global compact on migration, the setup of the community of practice on migration, and the particip participation in the ongoing dialogue at the UN Migration Network. I will be finishing. We are not calling for confrontation with national government in this matter. We are calling for a strong dialogue among different spheres of government, acknowledgement as partners for implementation and decision, decision, decision making and for our role in managing, managing key aspects of migration governance, such as inclusion and rights protection to be recognized. Our world organization of local and regional government is ready to contribute to achieve the recognition that we deserve in such an important issue for cities and for communities worldwide. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Mr. Basraoui, and specifically for recalling the critical role of uh, local and regional authorities to implement the two global compacts, on the, the one on refugees and the one on migration, and for the importance as well of um, partnership between different levels of governance, so really looking into uh, co co cohesiveness in that sense and not confrontation. I think these were very important words. Thank you so much. So I'd like now to, to give the floor to uh, Mr. Mohamed Saadie, just reminding you that uh, the colleague at the front here is going to help you keep in uh, with um, time. So don't hesitate to look at her from time to time. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. And if you give me uh, one minute in addition, uh, to thank the Turkish government and all local authorities in Turkey, especially Gaziantep, to, for transform, to transform the, the guys who present this show from refugees to migrants and later on to citizens. And we have to applaud for this uh, uh, human, uh, uh, humanity uh, work, very good work. This is for... <laughs> so we have to separate between migrant and refugee. Migrant is someone who chooses to move facultative to change his life to the better. And in general, he has the freedom to do what he wants. So he is an active element and added value to the country where to, uh, he moved to. While the refugee is someone who has been forced to move from his home and to do what they impose him to do, compulsory. Our mission as UCLG MOA and international organization, United Nations, UNDP, UNHCR, and IOM, and all our uh, uh, partner, is to, uh, this is uh, uh, our mission. This is the uh, very difficult mission to change the situation of refugees to be migrants as what Turkey have done for uh, distingu uh, in distinguished way of carrying and support based on humanita uh, humanity rules and rights. In the case of Lebanon, in Lebanon we have more than 19 million Lebanese people and uh, live abroad 16, about 16 million and in Lebanon only 3 million live as refugees. Uh, I mean as refugees, not migrants, because uh, they have the same situation of refugees. About two million came from Syria and more than one million from Palestine and other nationality. In the absence of a governmental uh, roadmap, the municipalities are the only one authorities in front to face this migration in a very hard situation and very, hard, very limited potential. However, international support remains the only guarantee for refugee and hosting community. In our uh, Union of Municipality, as I am president of the Union of Municipality in North Lebanon, we are very keen to implement the 2030 agenda and the SDGs because the localiz localization of SDGs is the right way to improve a better future they will ensure inside of the public priority to develop an, an ambitious uh, yet achievable shared vision and reflect the diversity of situation and more systematically involve all stakeholders. Noting then SDG is not more than a framework depending from uh, the situation of each country with its characteristic. Uh, we are working to create job opportunity for refugees to make them resilient together in the face of social and economic impact of migration in cooperation with the hosting community at the local level and sure with our uh, uh, partners. We support the engagement of all stakeholders, municipality, employees, citizens, government, institute donors, and all to reach the maximum performance and the transparency is the best tool for the good governance the trans, uh, and the participatory approach is highly recommended to implement the SDGs depending on the needs of citizens in the same time fighting against corruption. We are pioneers in Lebanon in applying the principle of transparency through our union work 
and our uh, web portal. We are putting everything, all bill, tender, income, out, out uh, uh, put ex expenses, everything we put it on our website. In addition, we uh, uh, broadcast and live, live all our council uh, meetings, and we were rewarded by a certificate in Lebanon as uh, the only one in Lebanon certificate of appreciation from Lebanese Transpar Transparency Association and the uh, cooperation with the International Associ Association of Transparency. We count on the international cooperation, especially through the organization, our organization, UCLG, and all our partners for an effective implementation and sharing experiences. We are trying to create dialogue, cooperation, trust building to stay up to date and follow up what, what the unexpected event and change like what passed now in Lebanon from uh, protesting, protest and uh, manifesto. Uh, we are trying to establish a twin sister relationship between uh, our municipality and municipality uh, abroad uh, to have, to get the good experiences about the local governance and uh, uh, yes, we, uh, as we are the only one party uh, face the impact of refugee and uh, to reduce the challenges. And the number of refugees in our region is twice, the number of refugees is twice as the number of citizens. And uh, we intend to ease pressure on our region in all possible ways. So we look about any opportunity to enhance refugees' self-reliance and improve the lives of both communities, the treatment of migration impact in our daily practices focusing on uh, uh, health, education, uh, gender equality, uh, women empowerment, uh, reducing inequality, uh, partnership. This is in, in, in brief. We are working hardly on this uh, uh, item. About the last uh, uh, our problem and, and what uh, bottleneck preventing future contribution, uh, the local regional government, especially municipality, are, as I said, the only one uh, empowerment need to achieve the SDGs and face the challenges of migration because they are in depth of the problem and the close, closest uh, to the population adequate municipality finance will be key of, to successful, uh, successful SDGs implementation and its fiscal autonomy uh, needs to be strengthening the SDGs localization and social Cohesion. The main problem in Lebanon is still in the restriction imposed on donor, donors and the, the difficulty of disturbing aids to stakeholders and to transfer funds to Lebanon with the approval of the Ministry Council. The inherent mess of and lack of coordination between donors and the NGO, the exclusively of dealing with some minister which led to a more of corruption and de de uh, depriving some area from the minimum of support. The participation of, and the cooperation of all uh, civil societies and local authorities are very important, not only to facilitate public awareness regarding sustainable development issue, but to endorse this quality, accountability, and impact of, uh, of sustainable development. The refugee crisis underscores a lack of political will uh, to protect refugees. Lebanese are losing their job because Syrians uh, are willing to work for less. And now we have the dangerous situation. We have a lot of Lebanese young people transform, uh, uh, change their identity card from Lebanese to a Syrian one to, to go uh, through the sea uh, to reach Europe or somewhere, somewhere uh, else. So uh, an increase in uh, in migration will deteriorate the security situation as poverty le leads to more tension. Municipality did not get the needs support, even that they are the only one in change to serve the refugees. Access to basic services, including essential health care, basic education, social protection, will reduce violence and discrimination and will promote cohesion to enjoy a safe, decent, and promote uh, uh, promising cities. This is in, in brief, our uh, situation, and this is our, uh, put it in the heart of our strategy of UCLG MEWA uh, in our paper uh, uh, delivered to, to uh, the UCLG uh, world, uh, and uh, to, to make a 
full cooperation with the United Nations and all international organizations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Sadia. I think yeah, there were many important points in what you shared with us, but um, I was particularly taken by what you were saying about the importance of uh, funding reaching uh, local and regional authorities directly, yeah. uh, because otherwise this is actually going against your attempt to fight against corruption and ensure transparency in the way service delivery is provided to, to refugees and migrants. So I think it's, uh, this is a very interesting point to, to, to take home yeah. and also educate indeed donors about the importance of uh, having funding streams that are more adequate uh, to, to address the challenges. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, I'd you. like now to uh, give the floor to uh, Mr. Dinsha Orkan. You have uh, six minutes. Thank you. First of all, I would like to welcome you all in the morning session we found that the mayor of Gaziantep Metropolitan Municipality has done great things and I would like to congratulate her in her presentation in the morning she told us about her bottlenecks and her challenges and it has been very well defined in our minds as well it is quite difficult indeed and fighting is one thing and succeeding is another thing and obviously Gazi Antep has been able to succeed it and the I would like to extend my gratitude to Mayor Miss Fatma Shahin and also I would like to thank the organizing committee for bringing together this panel the migrations have reasons and results and obviously it stands out as one of the most significant problems of the day. The concept of migration means the people living for somewhere else for political, economic or social re reasons. It can be defined as a universal incident and the migration has been present since the first days of humanity and it may it may be the case anywhere in the world while speaking about it one thing came to my mind i am the child of a family who migrated as well my grandfather was born in saloniki in greece they had their farms back in there and as a result of the war, those people had to migrate to Anatolia. And this person who owned a farm in Saloniki had to work as a, a person, as a servant in the bank. So that was a compulsory reason. Otherwise, no one would really leave their house, their home, and go somewhere else. That should be analyzed very well. And we can handle the migration as internal migration and external migration. Internal migration means moving from the rural to the urban areas. And external migrations are defined as moving from one country to another on a permanent or temporary basis. And the external migrations mostly happen for economic reasons and mostly from less developed countries to developed countries. Recently, the people have had to leave their homes for reasons of a war and the migration flux into Turkey is a great example of the external and mass migration. The crisis which started in Syria caused very big problems in terms of stability of Syria. Up until now, more than 19,000 innocent people were killed and this crisis is actually a very large-scale humanity drama covering the whole Middle East. During the conflicts in the country, young and old and innocent people were killed, and the survivors 
uh, took hostage in the neighboring countries. Since the day this crisis first broke out, more than two million Syrians have been displaced and they were forced to look for safe places for themselves and for their families. Esteemed guests, you might be moving from rural to urban areas or from one city to another city or from one country to another. There are still so many socio-political reasons of uh, the migration. If uh, the migration is very intense, uh, the infrastructure will not be sufficient and also more economic and cultural problems will arise. Despite such challenges, when the migration is managed well, it actually offers a great chance to households and even to the communities uh, the migrants arrive at. For an effective integration policy, the migrants have to be granted equal opportunities as the local citizens and the relevant arrangements must be made in the contracts, in the law, social cohesion, public health, education and citizenship matters should be covered with effective steps being taken. As the local governors, we have faced problems uh, stemming from migration and refugees, and we attempted to develop common strategies and aims. Accordingly, the migrants should be able to live together in a harmonized way as the host community. And we are working with the government, with the NGOs, with the organizations from the private industry, and we have to work in coordination with one another and contribute to the integration of the migrants. So it is our duty and responsibility. Also, I would like to underline one more thing. The Turkish people had to migrate from one place to another during the history, but we were never forced to migrate. Everyone was actually embraced with an understanding of Ensar, and this is the command from our religion. For that very reason, I believe that this forum will also be contributed with our ideas, and thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Orkan, for, for your statement, and um, particularly for, for stating the, um, the continuum that exists between internal and international migration and the role that uh, local and regional authorities, cities, have to play in managing these uh, dynamics, and as well really to reinstating the importance of uh, equal opportunities when it comes to access to services in local context. So thank you very much. Now I'd like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Abdurrahman Dursun. You have six minutes. Thank you. Thank you, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the relevant authorities of UN and Gaziantep municipality have come together to discuss about the migrants and the displaced people and this is about the local solutions. Hopefully, this forum will yield great results in terms of its declaration, and hopefully it will be able to identify the problems experienced by such people, and hopefully it will turn into a document that will be able to be submitted to the relevant parties. I should also say, that we have listened to the voice of the Syrian children as well as the musicians and their smile, their way of living, their happiness 
is worth everything that we did as the municipalities and as the country of Turkey will keep doing the same because their happiness, their peace, their chance to return their homes peacefully is highly important to us. There are legal and sociological definitions. We can talk about them at any time. However, sustainable development and how we can actually touch the lives of the uh, migrants is a significant matter to us. I am the mayor of Sultan Gazi district of Istanbul province and nearly 550,000 migrants are living in Istanbul. So it is a quite large city in this sense and one tenth of those people are living in uh, Sultan Gazi. That means roughly 55,000 people. And once this problem emerged, we understand many important projects uh, to offer a better life to these people. We created this migration center with Walt Academy. And within this center, legal problems, psychological problems, and the education-related problems of uh, these migrant people were discussed. And we have one lawyer, one social researcher, one psychologist, and uh, very significant works were carried out for uh, their integration into the society. Education is indispensable to us. If they are to be harmonized with the Turkish people, they should first be very well educated and they should be able to speak their own language and they should be able to speak Turkish since they will be living in Turkey. And nearly 2,444 people attended our language courses and they actually learned about Turkish very well. And in terms of healthcare trainings, we do also have our activities in the center and we do have our seminars and course for a healthy nutrition. We know how important it is to be peaceful within the family because if they are at peace as a family, they will be able to integrate with the people much more easily and for this purpose we are still providing them uh, with uh, family trainings we do have first aid trainings as well we also thought that they were important and nearly 1900 people uh, made use of such courses as well within Sultan Gazi district and in order to make it sustainable we should teach them how to fish instead of giving them the fish and accordingly we do have our employment projects as well the migrants are now opening up their own stores within our district we're also supporting them the shoe and textile industries are very important to our country and in this sense, we are actually uh, providing them with an employment and they are now indispensable partners to the Turkish people. They have great contribution to our district. So we do have various projects around music and we make sure that they are living with music and their harmony with the society is highly important for them to be successful people and nearly 126 families equal to 800 people are given uh, food on a daily basis so those people are unable to work they are all in need nearly two months ago this food campaign was ended and now we have social support program and these people are given a card with a certain amount of money deposited in the card because they are very hungry they are very needy people 
we are doing this. Otherwise, we would like to make sure that they are living a sustainable life. And uh, finally, while doing all of them, we would like to make sure that they embrace the life better. And uh, we would like to make sure that they live in a great harmony with the Turkish people and make friends. And as a result, I have to say that Turkey will, of course, carry this burden on its shoulder. So this is a responsibility for us. However, it is important that those people return to their home countries. Mr. President mentioned about his family background. He said they had a farm back in Saloniki and those people had to migrate to Turkey. So these people also have their properties back in Syria. They have their lives, they have their children, and they have their memories back in Syria. And they need to go back to their memories as well. And accordingly, Turkey has carried out uh, several operations to create a safe zone and in order to make it sustainable in order to be able to come up with a solution those people need to live their lives in their own countries and all the governments all the international community members have to support this so that they can maintain their lives back in their own countries and Turkey is still putting great efforts in order to uh, settle those people in the safe zone. I would like to thank the relevant uh, authorities and Gaziantep Metropolitan Municipality for organization of this event. Thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Dusun. I think you, um, you gave us a very concrete um, um, this is an illustration of basically how through a whole of governance approach one can uh, really tackle the, ma the main issues that are at the heart of human development applied to refugees and migrants, looking at um, providing for the needs in terms of education, in terms of uh, access to, to employment, so economic empowerment, the, the cultural dimension, which also came up uh, coupled with the critical issue of access to uh, language courses to facilitate integration. But you also offered some, some comments on the critical issue of return and how we have to think of it uh, also at, as we are also looking at uh, helping refugees and, and migrants um, at this point in time. So thank you very much for that. So now we are moving on to, uh, to our last panel uh, members. Uh, Ms. Susana Garrido Ganduelo, you, uh, you have the floor. I first came of when I when my flight landed for the first time. Excuse me. Unfortunately, the Spanish channel. We cannot hear the Spanish channel now. Uh, there is a problem about interpretation. Can we stop the speaker? There is a problem about interpretation. Can we stop? Uh, no, we had a complaint. If we didn't make that complaint, that's why we complained. Can you think of it? The people, when they cross a border, they may lose their lives. They leave some part of their life behind the borders. I would like to extend my thanks to each and every one of the participation to this forum and the panel speakers. Being here at this forum is a happiness for me and a privilege. We have come together and we had the opportunity. I'm more than happy to be sharing the speech with you here. The human dignity is a treasure for us, for all humanity, even in hereafter, in the afterlife. We need human dignity. It's a treasure. And some UN agencies and international organizations are 
In 1943, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and in 1989, Convention on the Rights of the Child was signed, and later on, in 2015, uh, 2030, uh, 2030 development goals were set, and 120 member states, the UN, signed a global compact on the rights of the refugees, and, and it fo I would like to focus on one document, and it is 2030 Sustainable Development Goals Agenda. And here, there are some challenges before us. And we have the objective of not to leave anyone behind. And in Andalusia, we are dealing with this. And I'm the mayor of Hijam Mandrika, a city in Spain. And we are working closely and relevant to the Sustainable Development Goals. And our program, our training programs, and the international cooperation program we have in Andalusia, and based on this program, this initiative, we have to merge a, a sustainable development goal one and two and the ten. SDG 10 tells about the quality of opportunities in our countries. And what is meant by this is people have safety, people have the right, it guarantees people's right to act freely and safely, and the law on migration also tells the same thing. Why am I telling you about it? Because the, the main focus is the rights of the refugees and migrants and, and the laws and legal regulations in uh, Spain shows that there is aporophobia. What is aporophobia? It's the phobia of poverty and po uh, uh, poor people. When you reject poor people and the poverty, it constitutes a violation of democracy because the human rights and equality are the greatest values of humanity. And this agoraphobia, the interpreter says so from Spanish to Turkish, agoraphobia is, and it lies in the very reptilian mind, the most uh, primitive part, and it is, it deals with the survival. And in setting the SDGs at the cerebral cortex of our brain, there is another answer. You know, 70 million people are displaced at global level, and more than half of this population are minors. And our brain knows. Human brain is connected with neurons, and we need that connectivity in our societies. In Spain, Article 146 of the Spanish Constitution says, Indeed, migration and right to asylum seekers. Uh, this provision of article deals with the migration and asylum seekers and refugees. And local governments should determine the resources. The municipalities and local governments, very much like the one that I represent here in our municipality, unfortunately, we don't have enough resources, sufficient resources. Local governance and local government is based on a competition. And this competition is not suitable for the nature of our role. And the municipal services and assistance and social services, all these social assistances, we have limited resources and insufficient, insufficient resources. I may conclude by telling one month ago in our municipality, Alexandro Ruboso came and together with his children and his wife, they came to our municipality. They never spoke Spanish. They came from Romania and they found a house and they started to work in a job and it was a bright morning that he came and and he died at minus two degrees and his spouse was wife 
witnessed everything personally and she couldn't believe what happened and their children were sleeping in a room and when I look at it as a mayor we cannot talk about financial resources what we have to do is not finding excuses but manage the situation and uh, the solidarity of our people in Rimandrike, the city where she is from, we could find a solution to it. And Alejandro, we could be provided with a solution. And our solution at local level, as Nelson Mandela says, poverty is not normal. Poverty is man-made. And it's people who can decrease Poverty. This is a problem of justice and equity. Poverty is a problem of justice and equity. Thank you very much. Uh, for really making the strong connection and strong plea to look at the issues of uh, migration and, uh, and refugees in relation to fighting poverty, uh, fighting inequalities, and really framing it politically in that sense. I think that's a very, very strong message. Thank you very much. And the individual power that we all have in that sense, uh, noting nevertheless the critical issue of lack of resources that exist uh, in local contexts. And I think this is an, uh, you know, something that we've heard as well from other panel members earlier. So we've come to the, to the moment uh, where we are now turning to the audience and um, taking questions that you may have for the panel members. Trying to keep with time, uh, we're just going to take a few questions. And also, in case, um, you would have questions for one another. Uh, that will be very, very welcome. So let me first see, is there any question in the audience before maybe I, t I turn to you, Mohammed? No? So Mohammed, you have the floor. Thank you, Cecile. Uh, no, I just want to underline something we have heard from mayors here, and we can notice how mayors are committed to this uh, question of migration and displacement. Uh, we've heard from uh, Susanna, which is, I think, a small city, how she is committed to this question of migration. But still something disturbing is the absence of legal framework and absence of, of, of means and resources also that, that the national government should sometimes devote to, to local authorities. Uh, we are not calling for a as I said in my introduction, in confrontation between national and, lo and local government, but to strengthen a kind of dialogue and debate to see how they can work together to, um, to give to migrants condition, human condition of living in the city. Uh, this morning, I think somebody under, uh, underlined this question of, of, of debates on on migration in the, at the national level with the, all the stakeholders, but we, we need to, to, to look at it. Sometimes, and we have seen this in Spain and the uh, United States, that the absence of legal framework can push local authority to, to be borderline and to enter in some conflict with the national government. We are not questioning the sovereignty we know that the question of security of migration is in the hand of national government. But this is, there is something to do together between local authorities, national authorities, and the stakeholders. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Does this uh, resonate with, uh, with other panel members, uh, the, the comments that Mohammed just made, in terms of the absence of legal framework, in terms of sometimes having to do things that are borderline? Yes, this is our problem actually because uh, in general and in uh, international level we don't have any, any strategic uh, uh, planning for, for migrant or, or, or refugees. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in Turkey um, have the, uh, the open door uh, uh, policy when, when in 2012 when in the beginning of the uh, Syrian crisis. And while in other countries, especially in Europe or other countries, they block the, the, the door uh, in front of, of uh, refugees or, or migrants. This is need uh, uh, international cooperation to put a strategy uh, for cooperation, uh, take into consideration the situation of, of uh, refugees uh, 
um, country of uh, resource uh, count uh, the, the human in, in humanity way because we talk about humanity uh, to implement all our our project for humanity as uh, uh, Nelson Mandela said uh, uh, my, my colleague uh, said so uh, 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 again Nelson Mandela said if we have an idea if we can transform it into action we can do the changement and we can do the, the development otherwise no no way to, to do this. No, we are in Lebanon 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 have a, a distinguished situation in all, in all the world uh, as uh, I explained before so uh, the Lebanese people uh, you can find uh, Lebanese people everywhere in the world everywhere we have the the, the uh, migrant Lebanese migrant is uh, 10 times from the uh, residents uh, in Lebanon. Uh, for example, in Brazil, we have 9 million Lebanese uh, people, and in Lebanon, we have only 3 million. This is the last statistic after, you know, we had in 2012, 6 million, now we have 3 million. It means that with 3 million, the half of popul Lebanese population leave Lebanon uh, to, to find another, another uh, country, uh, uh, to reach, uh, to, to, to gain the, their life and, and uh, their uh, families. This is, an, um, I, I uh, ask for the uh, international organization, especially uh, United, all, all relative to inter, uh, United Nations, and uh, like um, the international organization concerning uh, working in the migration domain, to, uh, to um, insist to have uh, um, uh, general um, uh, world uh, strategy depend on and based on the humanity rules and uh, to, to, to give uh, anyone his, his rules and uh, uh, this is what, what uh, to defend them. Thank you. Thank you very much. One could argue that the Global Compact on Refugees and the Global Compact on Migration are providing really this uh, international governance framework that will be lacking for decades to really uh, facilitate international cooperation uh, in the field of, of migration and, uh, and refugees. But do you, don't you think that this is something that you could be using, that would be instrumental in your, in your own context? Because of course we do understand that now we are really much at the beginning of implementing those two compacts. And what is really good, as you know, is that in both texts, the role of local and regional authorities, municipalities, is recognized. Also, for example, in the context of the multi-donor trust fund for the implementation of the GCM, local and regional authorities, cities, can be recipient, direct recipient of funds. And so there the, seemed to be progress somehow in that sense, in you know, empowering uh, cities and local and regional authorities as important actors working in the context of those frameworks. But what would be, do you think, the, the, the impediments or what needs to be put in place by international organization to support this further? Yes, yes, uh, it's a very important question because uh, uh, as I thought uh, about uh, uh, international strategy, we talk about the international cooperation between uh, uh, international organization like uh, uh, International Organization for Migration your, uh, uh, Association and all uh, our partners now in this inter this. Uh, International conference, I think, I think uh, had in Gaziantep now, because uh, uh, let's, uh, as, as I told before, SDGs. Uh, we talk about SDGs to to uh, to, uh, uh, to reduce all inequality or to to, uh, to reduce all gap between between uh, uh, people who live in, 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 on this planet. Uh, and no one uh, behind. So, uh, but but uh, SDGs is not a framework. It's only framework depend from from each uh, country to to another. So in Lebanon we have three million Lebanese, and we have more than three million uh, non-Lebanese. So if we have one Lebanese for one non-Lebanese, and both live in very bad conditions now. Both. So about international organization, they are trying, and I have to confess, we have all of us, we have to confess that, uh, that the international organization, they are trying to do the, the maximum possibility, but we have a um, lot of barrage, a lot of problem, a lot of uh, rules from government and, and other uh, uh, countries 
uh, don't allow us to, to, to make what, what we have to, what we have to, to do. Uh, for example, uh, we need laws. We need we need as I talk about about open door and uh, closed uh, area with, about about uh, rules uh, in, in, in Lebanon. Uh, each uh, support have to go to, to the migrant to the migrant or for Lebanese or for anyone. Uh, people must must approved by the uh, council uh, minister council. So this is a very uh, big problem, and we have, as, as you know, everywhere we have about Cedar uh, um, Cedar One uh, uh, conference held in Paris a uh, couple of years ago. They insist to implement a project in Lebanon, but the, our government insists to take the money and, and implement. By itself. this is our our problem. So we have a lot of problem. We have a lot and lot. Uh, even the international organization work in Lebanon have a big problem uh, with our government because it, 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 it doesn't allow for them to do as, as um, uh, uh, in a, on perfect, perfect way. This is a um, uh, case. The other, other case, I think uh, if, if we have uh, uh, um, uh, yani like like what when we uh, declare about SDGs in 2015, if we can uh, have a, a paper, a very universal paper, international paper, we can impose for each country to, to respect it. Otherwise, we, we can, uh, we can uh, take uh, other, other uh, penalty or, or something like that from United Nations or, or something, something like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I think what, we, what we're looking at is really as we're entering the decade of action, which is basically, the, 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 it's clear that we're not doing very well as international community on delivering on the 2030 agenda. And now we really have 10 years uh, to, to be able to meet uh, what is in the goals. And what we have really in front of us is the ability to look at migration as one of the accelerators to really achieve uh, the 2030 agenda. So I think it's a very intriguing let's say, idea about how we turn migration from something that is perceived in a negative way into something that is perceived in a positive way, and that is really directly uh, supporting sustainable development across the globe. So I think this is indeed uh, important that we convey that message in very positive ways. And we, we of, of course, uh, work with governments to make sure that they keep uh, their eyes very closely on the 2030 agenda. and. Um, that we get as close as possible to delivering what they have committed to deliver. I see that there was a hand in the audience um, for, for a question. I'm going to take just two questions and then we'll be closing the panel, uh, not to take too much time. The floor is yours. Please make sure to uh, state your name and your organization, please. Uh, thank, you, thank you so much. Uh, it's a, a great session for us, very informative session. I would like to ask a very brief question, and uh, as a moderator, you can direct my question. Uh, one from Turkish mayor, one from abroad mayor, because uh, in Turkey, as most of the participants uh, underline, we have a Syrian refugee crisis, and we host very huge number of uh, Syrian people. By the way, uh, I am attending this uh, forum from Kahramanmaraş municipality. I am a, a director of foreign relations. And uh, in Kahramanmaraş also, we host uh, almost 100,000 uh, uh, refugees from Syria. My question is briefly is that in the uh, migration management uh, do our mayors uh, think uh, local governments uh, actively involve this process? In uh, Turkey, we observe that we are uh, confronting some uh, problem as a local government. In the uh, migration management uh, regarding these regulations and other activities as the local governments, most of the municipalities try to make do some things and they uh, exert a great efforts. But as a, a general pictures, do local governments involve effectively in this process? Thank you so much. 
Thank you, sir. So, someone would like to answer? Yes? No, it's Now, first we should state each local government has its own budget means and activities are depends on their budget limits. But local governments, can they tackle this? Can they address or should they be involved? It is a must. It's a sine qua non. They have to. We have no alternative. First, it is a moral issue. This refugee and migrant issue is a moral issue for our concept of civilization and our beliefs and our values for civilization, it's a sine qua non. Secondly, we are elected people as local mayors. And in our region, in our electorate, if there is any problem in our electorate or any potential of problem, then we have to create solutions to these problems and potential problems. In such cases, we cannot say it's none of our business, but if we don't create solutions to these problems, finally, in the end, the host community and the Turkish community and the refugee migrant community will have clashes and conflicts. It will lead to greater problems. Therefore, local governments and the municipalities should be involved in any case. There is no alternative to this. The central governments may set the general policies. It's the same in Turkey. The government of Turkey spent a 40 billion US dollars budget so far, and it implemented open door policy for migrants and the refugees. This is the overall project general. All types of legal regulations and framework is supported, but we, the elected people, are at the core of life, and we have direct contact with the people, with the citizens. And we face all types of problems. When we walk in the streets, when we visit a shopkeeper or any local artisans, we hear these problems from the people. We have no alternative but find solutions to these problems. And we have to create mechanisms to address these problems. I don't believe it's not possible. But only if we have a good management, we can address the problems. It's not just about management. The problem is the population, the number is ever increasing and it is unforeseeable. If we have a foreseeable figure, number of people, then it will be easier to manage. In the morning session, Deputy President Fuat Oktay said at the very beginning of the crisis it was 10,000, later on 30,000, 100,000 we were talking. Now we have 3.6 million refugees only from Syria. The biggest handicap is that it is unforeseeable. If we could foresee, then managing the problem would be much easier. Therefore, we have to create policies. We have to develop local policies. I have tried my best to speak about it in my speeches, and we try our best. We try to touch their lives, and we have no other alternative. The local governors and the mayors have to be involved, or else the problem will worsen. Therefore, it's a sine qua non, I believe, that the local governments must be involved in the process. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, did anyone else want to, wanted to respond? Yes, I think I saw your hands. Yeah. Of course, a while ago, I told my family is also a migrant family. And this migration issue and welcoming and accepting it is important. Our mayor stated a while ago, the new coming migrants, we welcome them, we embrace them, we provide them with the basic needs, food and shelter. The basic and emergency needs are addressed, but but it is it is not sustainable. It is to make it sustainable. We should not give them the fish. We should teach them how to catch the fish. The mayor said a while ago, we should find sustainable solutions. As far as I observe, unfortunately, the, the support and assistance by the Republic of Turkey is unmatched. And unfortunately, no other country shares this burden. And it's a terrible thing. If each country, each government shoulders its due burden and gives a contribution, then it could be easier and we could find. When we talk about local governments and municipalities, each and every person that is coming to your region is a responsibility that you are held accountable for. And 
so that we have a responsibility for those people. And it requires some budget and some financial means to fulfill this responsibility. We never avoid our responsibility, but to fulfill this responsibility, we, the mayors, have to be empowered economically, financially. And as we said, if we can provide employment and job and accommodation and shelter to these migrants, then they can become self-sufficient and independent so that you will, it will be easier to find a solution. This employment, we should create opportunities for employment and self-sufficiency of the migrants. So we should not be discriminatory or to newcomers. As I said, my grandfathers, before coming to Turkey, they had a farm. And when they come to Balikesir, he worked as a janitor. But now I'm the grandson of a janitor, a staff for cleaning services in a public office. I'm the mayor of that city. We should reconsider these concepts. As local governments, as municipalities, we have put every possible contribution, and we make a commitment to try our best to find sustainable solutions as much as our budget limits and financial means allows. Thank you. No legislan cuando comentaba la pregunta sobre los temas jurídicos. La materia, como he comentado en la anterior intervención, es el Estado que tiene la competencia exclusiva, pero sí es verdad que, que los ayuntamientos lo regulan a través de, de ordenanzas. Y entonces, en este. Excuse me, unfortunately, the Spanish boat is not interpreting and we cannot interpret. Excuse me, the Spanish to Turkish boat is not interpreting. Ah, que no están traduciendo. It seems that there is no translation. Um, would you be able to speak in English, potentially, or? Oh, no. no. <laughs> there was a problem about the interpreting both channels, and the Spanish boot says they cannot hear the Spanish interpreter. Unfortunately, we cannot interpret. Can we kindly warn the speaker to stop for a while till they fix the technical problem? They cannot hear the Spanish. The Spanish boot is not interpreting, and we have to suspend it. Sorry. Can we suspend it for a while? Yes, sir. But I, I just, I just translate the last part of the. Of it. I'm sorry. I was right. Uh, Thank you so much, Mohammed. So I will leave you the floor, and you'll be the, the last to intervene as we, as we have to close the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, really, I have to, uh, to confess at the end of this session be, uh, for one thing. We, uh, I think uh, all people live, who live on this planet, uh, the majority of them uh, are migrant from uh, even internal migrant or external or due to the, some uh, uh, unexpected uh, circumstances. So uh, we, uh, our aim is uh, to have a, a resilient, resilient uh, uh, social, uh, re resilient cities, resilient cities who, who can serve a migrant or refugee uh, anywhere. So, be, be, uh, and I think that only the municipality and local authorities can do uh, these uh, uh, resilient cities and can implement the SDGs and, and the new urban agenda. So we have to cooperate for, for more cooperation and, and more uh, so solidarity between all international organizations. I ask all of them to, do, uh, to keep in touch in uh, uh, conferences like this one and uh, to, uh, to achieve our goal to have a resilient uh, society, resilient city, resilient countries, resilient world. This is our aim. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think these are very strong words uh, and really summarize extremely well what we've tried to tackle in, the, in this panel. I think very strong uh, notions came out, such as the one of sustainability, the one of solidarity within countries and among nations, and the one of predictability, also how to better plan and how basically 
partnership is, is really key in that sense. So I thank you very much, and I'd like to, uh, to give a strong you know, round of applause for our panel members for those very interesting contributions.